So far, we've been getting information, either typing it directly into the program, or we're asking the user on the command line and then printing things out to the command line. This is pretty limiting and it gets pretty boring quickly because there's not as much you can do here. Now, if you remember back to our paradigm, a computer program gets information from somewhere, you process it, and then you write that information somewhere. So far, we've either been hard coding the information in the program or getting it from the user. Let's broaden our horizons out and start getting the information and writing the information to the file system. What I did in this lesson was I went to a website called Gutenberg.org and it has open source textbooks, of books that have gone out of copyright. And I downloaded the text to Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens, which I happen to be reading right now. From there, I put it in the data tale.txt directory. That's what I saved the file as. Now you can save it as anything you want. It needs to be at that level or lower so that you can put in a path to get to it. So go grab you some free text from gutenberg.org. You can do Tale of Two Cities if you want to follow along here. But this really opens you up to a whole new level of sources of information. So we use a with statement. And that creates what they call a context in Python. We're not going to go too in-depth to this. But what this context does for you is that it remembers to close that file when you're done, no matter what. Even if you hit an error, that file handle is going to be closed. And if you go around leaving file handles open, that can cause bad things like memory problems if you're on a production server. So you definitely want to put these within a with block so that it closes automatically and you don't have to think about it. So with open, and I give the path to my file here, which is in a directory data, and I named it tail.txt, and I said encoding is UTF-8, which the Project Gutenberg files are encoded that way, as, and I just did F for file, and then I go all text equal F.read. So initially, we're just going to read everything into this variable all text. And when you print out the length of all text, it shows that there are 777,046 characters in this text. Now, I want to turn this into a list. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take all text and I'm going to split it. And split will split on all the white space, whether it's new lines, tabs, spaces. It's going to create a list item for each of those. And when you do the length of words, you find out there's 138,965 words to start with in this text. Now, a lot of those words have all kinds of weird characters. You know, quotes, new lines, tabs, spaces, single quotes, I mean, just all sorts of non-letter characters. So I'm going to show you a trick here. From string, I'm going to import ASCII underscore letters. And when you print that out, you see that it's a list of all the standard English letters in lowercase and uppercase. There are easier ways to do this with list comprehension. I'm going to show you how to do it with what you've learned so far. And then we're going to refine it over the next couple of lessons to show you how to do it in a more Pythonic way. Right now, I'm going to create an empty list called clean words. And for every word in words, I'm going to start with a clean word that's an empty string. Now, when you loop over a string, it goes through each character. So for letter in word, I want to check if the letter is in ASCII underscore letters, then I'm going to add that letter to the clean word. So I'm getting rid of any character that's not A through Z or capital A through Z, if clean word. Now what this does in Python is truthy is any word that has at least one character in it. So I'm only going to pin things that after I remove all the garbage characters still have something left. Then I'm going to say clean words dot append. I'm going to get that clean word and I'm going to lowercase it. Remember how we showed you to do that. And the reason is, is I don't want capital and to not be the same word as lowercase and. So I'm just going to lowercase everything and append it to clean words. Okay, we're going to create a sorted words list that's going to be empty. And then we're going to loop through for every word in our keyword sorted clean words. So it's going to go from A down to Z, sort the words out, and we're going to append that word into sorted words. And when you print it out, and I'm going to grab the last 10, so I start negative 10 words here. And you can see you've, 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 and then all the way to zealous, zealous, and zip. 
Now you've probably had an apostrophe in it, but remember we removed all the non-letters out of the words. Again, there's an easier way to do this with list comprehension, which we're going to cover shortly, but this is how you would do it with your existing knowledge. How do we write back to a file? So again, it's with open, and here I do data, and I call it tail underscore sorted dot text, and you provide this W parameter. And what that does is it says write. If you don't provide, you can do R in the earlier one, but if you don't provide a parameter here, it automatically will open it to read. But you have to do W to write. You could do A to append, but I want to overwrite every time I run this so that I just have one list of all the words, not multiple list if I run it more than one time. And and then I'm going to join all those words with a new line in between them. So this is new syntax here. This is how you take a list and turn it back into a string. And it's you put the separator as a string, and it's dot join, and then I put in the sorted words, and that comes back with my lines. And then with the file handle, the F, I want to write those lines to the file. Now let's take a look at that. If we go over to the sorted text file, you can see here it is, it's a list of all the words in alphabetical order that was in the original text. So that's it. You've just broadened your horizons massively. You can start opening text files, reading them in, manipulating them, and doing anything you want with them using list and for loops. Hit subscribe because I'm going to keep coming out with more lessons both advanced and beginner. If you learned something, smash that like button so I can help more people. I'll see you in the next one.